Howdy folks, and welcome back to Hilda. Today we're going to be watching Season 3, Episode 2, which is titled The Fairy Mound. Obviously, we heard about fairies for the first time last episode, which wasn't the strongest episode of the show. It was very much a reset, kind of a, a, a reestablishment of the status quo after the Mountain King movie. We're in a new town, Toffatin, with the first other relative of Hilda's that we've seen other than her mom, her great aunt... Astrid, I think her name was. Uh, and she told us a little bit about fairies. It seems to be a big part of the town of Toffaton. Everyone has the horseshoes on their doors to uh, apparently ward off the fairies. Uh, so I guess fairies are to Toffaton as giants or trolls were to Trollberg. Uh, so I also did look ahead because I remembered that there was one episode early on in season three that is longer than the standard episode. It looks to be episode three. So I'm willing to bet that we're gonna get a, a three episode arc here in Toffatin and that the longer one here is going to kind of wrap things up as we head back to Trollberg with whatever newfound quest or knowledge that we have uh, kind of, you know, being there with us. Uh, at least that's just my prediction. This whole season could be in Toffatin. I don't think so given that I super overanalyzed the kind of Trollberg skyline in the intro here. Uh, but my guess is three episodes here, so we'll get kind of an act. We had very much a setup in Act 1 of, like, here's fairies, here's something. Probably going to get more to do with that, with some big thing to do, and then a big crescendo to this little arc in Episode 3. At least that's my guess. That's how I would kind of structure things if I was making a season of television. Then we kind of get back to normal Hilda Fair for the rest of the season, set some up for the finale, and then we have a big hour and 17 minute long thing to finish out the show. Speaking of which, we're almost done. Seven episodes to go, six after I'm done watching this one. You know, the march of time catches up with all of us, right? Uh, I expressed my, my feelings last time, uh, but you know, they're no less diminished today. Uh, very, very sad when this is going to be over. But I'm going to enjoy it while it still lasts. So let's scooch over here as I thank you for watching this video. Uh, hey, the as I'm recording this, the Mountain King reaction has not gone live yet. But uh, the last couple ones that have, have, you know, we've seen little jumps in the viewership. So I'm grateful for that. I don't know if it's just because I'm drawing closer to the movie or what. But, you know, just thank you all for watching. I appreciate it a lot. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you see when this and more come out. Obviously, you don't need to know when this comes out because you're already watching it. Uh, but just make sure you subscribe, leave a like on the video, uh, and leave a comment. Let me know what you think of this episode, fake spoilers for the season, or this whole Toffatin arc, or anything else you want to tell me. Uh, my tea for today is Sleepy Time in just a normal, plain, regular mug. And I think that's all I got to say. So let us get started with Hilda Season 3, Episode 2, The Fairy Mound, starting up in 3, 2, 1, go. Ah... I try to pay slightly closer attention to everything happening. Yeah, I almost forgot they're older now. When's Alpha gonna grow up? <laughs> Nowhere space, Woodman. Somebody cloaked and hooded. I'm making a mental note to pause on whoever's cloaked and hooded next time if we don't get them today. Is it the weather lady? Who knows? She's still out there somewhere. I'm still holding on that she's gonna come back soon. We do see somebody cloaked here in this little title screen. So who knows? Twig? Oh. Oh, we're in a we're in a bad dream. Oh, well that's dangerous. Yo, the animation on that was sick. Thanks. Are those like green onions on the pancakes? Morning, I mean, I do love me some Chinese green onion pancakes. Totally different from our kind of notion of pancakes here in the States. Those are more savory, less pancakes. Sweet. Maybe she can if you leave some for her. Latkes. Are you okay, Hilda? Yeah, I just had a weird dream. Well, I for one feel very refreshed. Maybe all your charms and whatnots do have healing properties after all. Well, of course they She's do. She's like, fuck you, Joanna. You didn't believe? Shop just opposite the post office. Say hello to Bjorn for me if you're in there. Bjorn. He owes me a lot of money. Oh. He's got that charm debt. I'm good for it, I swear. Just give me one more charm. This is so weird. It's just an awesome keyring. It's a fairy. Look at this statue. She's is she like gonna to say, you? why have I never heard oh, of fairies? Do we have to get into this again? This place is practically fairy town. 
Don't you think it's really weird that neither my mum or my great aunt has ever mentioned that? I mean, look at this. So what are you saying? Literally the fairy village. Saying, you know, out there, there's somebody who's never heard of Trollberg, right? I just need to pause real quick. Uh, I took a trip last week to New York City. Uh, and I, I just thought of this because we took a train up uh, as we were heading out of the city to get to our final destination. Uh, we took a train up to Tarrytown and went to Sleepy Hollow. Uh, just like, you know, Trollberg with trolls and Toffatin with fairies. Sleepy Hollow, a town known for... Pretty much one thing, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, the classic horror story featuring the Headless Horseman. Uh, and the town is like all done up with like pumpkin. I mean, granted, yes, it's early fall, but tons of Headless Horseman stuff everywhere, pumpkins everywhere, general spooky vibe that they try to keep throughout the town. Uh, so I, you know, kind of feel really similar to how they feel like, oh, we're in a town that's known for one thing and one thing only. We're going to get to the bottom of it. Uh, it was it was fun. You know, it's it's one of those places that once you've been, you feel like you don't ever have to go back. But, uh, you know, I kind of wish that the city I lived in was known for something just absolutely horrific that, you know, people touristed over. And we said, yes, we love the horrific stuff here. But alas, you know, chopped and screwed rap and purple drink. And a mattress salesman. That's what Houston's known for, baby. We can ask around about them on the way. Excuse me. Huh? Can you tell me anything about fairies? Oh, um, well now, let me see. Um, there aren't as many as there used to be. They're okay. invisible. Well, they're very, very small. And they're wings. You've got to sign some paperwork to see them. They kidnap children and whisk them away to the fairy country. And when one goes to fairy country, they're never seen again. Interesting. There's a fairy country upstate where my dog went when I was a kid. But none of it adds up. Maybe they're just not real. There's Dang. There's a reason they're called fairy tales and not just tales. They're kind of spitting, though. I'm not going to lie. Official fairy trail. No, that's a tourist trap thing. A fairy mouth. Come on, don't fall for it. Everything's going to be overpriced and all the... <laughs> the vendors got you. They already got you once you start the trail. So they are It's strong. not the fairies you have to worry about. It's the, the price gouging. <laughs> yep. Ah, yes, the one villager we haven't pestered today. I to ask you about all the horseshoes on your house. What about them? Fairies. I see them. You dare speak their name and bring bad fortune to my doorstep. Leave my door, foul wisps of people of the night. Damn. And you Kiss your mother with that boy. Well, his mother's probably very dead. Home. Why didn't you ever say anything about fairies? Fairies? Oh, just a lot of stories to sell cheap tap to the tourists. They eat that See, stuff up. Except they're very expensive they're not real. stuff. But that it's probably best we don't mention this incident to your mother. Why not? You Interesting. Know what like. I think it's deeper than that. You still like camping? <gasps> oh, never mind. Hilda's just <laughs> completely snapped out of it now. Camping? Oh, boy. What are you doing? You've got to let it catch fire first. Otherwise, it's no good. That is truth. That is absolutely truth. You need that crispy black exterior. No, that's a firefly. I understand if they don't have them in your part of the country, Hilda. We used to vacation up to Pennsylvania to visit family when I was a kid, and it was always so fascinating seeing the fireflies come out at dusk. The one bug I didn't mind if it was on me. You just catch him, look at him, play. Want to go home. Make him go from hand to hand. <laughs> Why did you even leave in the first place? Well, it's a small town. I suppose I outgrew it. Bad incident with fairies. When you had me, you moved into the cabin. Why didn't you come back here? Oh, These are all very it's, valid questions. It's hard to explain. Hmm. Is that Joanna? Yo, the shorts with the boots is an interesting look. That's gotta be Joanna, right? Actually, I couldn't tell how tall it was. It could be her great aunt. Well, here's the hood and figure. It looks like I don't have to pause the intro next time. Okay. I was gonna say, it looked a little too short to be Joanna. But at the same time, I wanted mm, the tea. The Not this tea, but uh, you, me the you know what I mean. Please? Yo, lingonberries. 
Yo, the Sweden aesthetic. Okay, so quick story time. My dad travels a lot for work, and uh, he, you know, occasionally would bring stuff home. And my mom fell in love with uh, lingon, lingon silt, I believe it's called. It's uh, basically jam made with lingon berries, which I don't know if they're native to Sweden, only appear in Sweden, or what. But she fell in love with it. So it was every time... Every time he like went to Sweden or anywhere around there, he had to bring her back some some lingon berries, uh, or I guess it's called lingon silt. That's what it said on one of the jars, but we always just called it lingon berries, even though it was jam. So the fact that he mentioned that right there, like, I understand people go crazy for that shit, especially if it's not native to where you live. Once again, the uh, that and the the fireflies, like I said, all these different experiences that you have when you're elsewhere. Speaking of that New York trip, since it is early fall, the leaves are changing colors. Here in Houston, they just kind of like turn brown and fall off on the trees around here because it goes from like summer to winter, like over the course of a week, basically here. But driving through New York, we had all sorts of shades of colors of the leaves and it was absolutely beautiful. Don't get that around here. Bunny. Oh, oh no, it's the, the oh, what's it, what was it called? The shapeshifter. Change of plan. I need to show you guys something. Come on. Hi, Mr. Fuka. Hi, Mr. Fuka. No, <laughs> that's so tragic. <laughs> they all just immediately terrible stealth check. It's a hill. It's not just a hill. It's a fairy mound. Not this again. Are her charms How keeping you know? them at bay? It has to be, right? They're placed all around. Where are the fairies? David, you're about to go so to fairy country. Just, they're invisible. Never gonna see him again. David's gonna die for a third time. She's the only person in town who doesn't want to talk about them. Maybe she protects them. I think it's just a weird hill. I don't know, David. Your great aunt's charms? Yeah, she was doing something with them last night. Oh, Hilda. Gone, went and done it now. Come on, David. No, put it back. David? Oh, uh, he's in fairy country. He's fucked. I used to pretend you could hear red wolves howling in the distance and say it's a good job we're protected by this magical tent didn't we see a red wolf in the season two is in the the deer fox episode right well it's just you were worried about bringing her here i need to know there i need to know everything in... since you left I never really forgave you for not coming with me to Trollberg. Ooh. Tofferton is my home. I couldn't leave. But you needed to. And we found that boarding school. I know, and I wouldn't change the way things went. Mm. Everything that Joanna told us about growing up in Trollberg, I had always assumed it was with other family, but she just went to a boarding school in Trollberg. So she was really just kind of by herself, just her whole life? What about her parents? It's, it really seems like David. her Aunt Astrid is the only only real family she has left. We're probably just a bit turned around anyway. Ah, oh, they're in the unknown. David, where are you? It is that time of year, though, to revisit David. over the garden wall. Check out my reaction series on YouTube. Ah! Oh. David! Where have you been? Where have you been? Oh, I thought he was going to say there was like some kind of a big time differential or something. Like, I've been in here for hours. Where are the kids? Oh, they're not back yet. Oh, I'll get it. Show off. No. Oh, I think it's for you. I would like to borrow a casserole dish. What for? Yeah, not what'd you find this time? My feet in. Uh, I don't think so. Wait. Check. Have you, you tried the river? Run? I could tell you where those kids went. What do you mean? Has something happened to them? Ooh. The dish, please. Damn. Ah. He drives a hard bargain. <laughs> Yep, 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 yep. Is that my casserole? <laughs> Finders keepers! Does this look like the way we came? Now is. I've got a bad feeling. Oh! Guys. That's gnarly. I thought it was Joanna for a second. What is that? Knew exactly how to get no there. Idea, but let's keep as far away from it as possible. The fuck is that? Is that a mushroom being? Oh, I was going to say, where's the tie? And then it went all Sauron on us. Speaking of, is about to start sniffing. So it's the scene from Fellowship when, when they're hiding from the Nazgul. 
Yep. We have to get out of here. That's yeah. legitimately horrifying. Like, a lot of the creature design hasn't, like, weirded me out or anything, but these... These fuck with me a little bit. I don't like them. Okay, basic stealth mechanics. Their cones of vision don't seem to be too extreme. You knew. I've played Metal Gear Solid. I could get around them. Joanna, I'm you knew. You knew there was still a fairy mound in Topperton and you didn't tell me. But right now we need to dig. Just dig the whole thing out? I need to know if this is like a hollow earth situation or just like interdimensional. Ah, also, Frida, you got any spells or anything? Okay. That's probably Joanna and Astrid snatching them back, right? Ooh. Goodness, Yo, that's baby. horrifying. They were like buried under there. I can't believe you kept this from me, from us. Why didn't you say anything? I didn't want to pique Hilda's interest. I knew that if she knew, she would- I thought it was safe, that the mounds were all gone. Why didn't either of you say anything? Yeah. How did you know how to get us out like that? Because- It happened to her. Because something similar happened to me once. I need to know how long she was under. I followed it. I followed it too far, and it almost took me. So that's why you left? And why I never brought you here. What were those things in there? Mushrooms! In the eyes of the fairy isle. The mound disorients you, brings you to a place between here and there, until you find yourself in the island's gaze. If that had happened, you would have been lost. What were you doing Interesting. last night? I thought I'd better check the protections and charms I'd put in place. To gotcha. make sure it wouldn't lure anyone in. Well, they didn't work very well, did they? No, it's that one's Hilda's fault. They were working. Are you sure you don't want to stay another night? Oh, are we leaving? I think we've had enough relaxation. For I don't want to check. I don't want to check the timeline. Loam carry your bags. Why didn't you tell me? Because you wouldn't have come. Aw, that is true, though. I'm only a phone call or a letter away. Damn, that's tough. I thought we were going to get more time here. No, there's the train. Okay, I was going to say, we've got to get something else, right? A little Stranger Things sounding. They coming. Okay, so that's the end. Okay. Uh, okay, so this was... You know, so we had a bit of a two-part. Well, I say two-parter, except, you know, that was definitely, you know, a classic Hilda Stinger for something to look for next time. That episode was significantly better than episode one of the season. Like I said, episode one was like a reestablishment of the status quo. Not too much crazy stuff happened, even to the point where even Hilda commented on it, right? She said, like, and no weird stuff is going to happen. And then, like, they had a WAF adventure. It's, you know pretty light fare for the show. Lighter than David's light rock, I guess. Uh, but this, this was juicy. Uh, fairy lore, while still really not learning anything about fairies, we still technically didn't even see any fairies, right? Except potentially at the end there, coming out of there. I couldn't tell if that was like, you know, a, a fairy figure wearing a robe or one of those mushroom creatures uh, coming out to terrorize Toffetan. Uh Also, we're on the train home so I don't really know how we're going to get back there to save it. I mean, I guess Tantu could warp us through nowhere space, right? That's a big jump. Uh, I don't know how well he could do it, uh, but it was weird. Like, as they were saying goodbye, I was feeling like there's got to be more here. Like, we're, we can't just leave and then the very next shot they're on the train. So, gosh, I don't know if that's going to be next episode. Uh, next episode's a long one, like I said. It's like five minutes longer, I believe. So, uh, I feel like it's got to be that one, right? Like, th we, can we can't just go back to Trollberg and have just a, a slightly longer adventure for, like, no reason. Like, it's got to tie back into whatever we just saw, right? I don't think we're going to take a couple episodes off and then, like, for whatever reason, just come back to Toffetan. Uh, oh, I got a... My postcard from Astrid says, Everything's fucked. We're in danger. Help us. 
I don't know why she would reach out to Hilda and say, you're our only hope, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, but, uh, you know, it's just, you know, I'm curious to see what happens next. Uh, last episode was like, a, yeah, all right, I guess I have to watch the next one to see what happens because I didn't really get much out of this one. This episode I got a lot more out of and I'm dying to know what happens next. Uh, seeing as how, like I said, they told us a lot without really telling us anything about the fairies, right? We understand slightly how the fairy mounds work. You get lured in there, disoriented by the mushrooms, and then taken by the fairy island, I think they said, when it catches you in its gaze. So, you know, that we know for sure, right? Uh, we've, you know, seen the transportation to the disorienting fairy world, right? Um, and we learned a little bit about Joanna, stuff I kind of expected, suspected throughout the whole episode, confirmed there at the end. Uh, but now I'm just, I'm just really curious as to how it ties back in, in a future episode. Um, yeah, I'm just really curious to see what happens next. Uh, and we only have six episodes to go, which is, you know, like I said, every episode just brings us one closer, but that's, hey, that's every show, right? We are, you know, I don't know. I was gonna, I was gonna be all philosophical in it, and like the amount of time I spent watching this episode is the exact same time I spent watching a season one episode. This still brought me that much closer to the end of the show, right? But uh, it's just now that we are closer to the end, it's like every every moment feels precious, right? Um, yeah, I don't think I have too much else to say. This was this was a solid episode. This was a lot better than the first one, like I said. Uh, I mean, just two in the season, easily the best of the season. Uh, still not as good as some of the as the highlights of season two, but season two was just very very good. Uh, this one I would say was probably about on par with some of the better season one episodes, uh, you know, give or take. Uh, maybe not a couple of like the highest high points, like the Nightmare Spirit. Uh, stands out to me as a particularly great episode from season one. Uh, a couple others here and there, but like, you know, I'd take this one over like uh, the first, the, the Vitra episode, not my favorite. Uh, I'm sure there's a bunch of them I just straight up cannot remember at this point from season one. You know, I think I said last week that it just feels like I just started watching the show, but now thinking back, season one feels like ancient history at this point. Uh, I guess at about four a week, yeah, it takes about three months per season, roundabout, so uh, season one would have been about between five and six months ago, give or take, uh, which is, you know, you know, I'm willing to say quite a while ago in the grand scheme of things. Uh, but hey, I think I'm done tonight. Uh, I'm done talking. Uh, so hey, don't forget to leave a like on your way out. Leave a comment. Let me know what you thought of this episode. And I guess come back next time to figure out uh, more fairy stuff. Uh, I guess we're not letting this thing go. This really is the theme of the season, it seems like. Uh, so come back next time as we hit uh, 3x3. Take ease, everybody.